take your coffee break with me. Come and take your coffee break with me. Come and take your coffee. Come and take your coffee. Come and take your coffee break with me. Welcome back to Coffee Break with Candace. I hope you've had a wonderful week. I have another incredible guest, Claude Nogas. He is a chef and he is going to share his story and also give us a recipe that we can enjoy at home for Mardi Gras since we won't be able to meet in person this year. I created this, this really, really fantastic uh, 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 king cake that's on a stick that I that I discovered oh, to be from in a troll. That's awesome. That and is so, awesome. And so for people that have kids that are from Louisiana or people that want to display the history of Mardi Gras across the country when they see this, they have the opportunity of making that individual king cake on a stick with cinnamon rolls. It's the same thing. It's just that it's the it's the instant and quick way of accomplishing the same goal. Oh, that's so fabulous. I'm so into that. That's awesome. And, and you know, one of the things that we have that's really a big issue for us in terms of us being Louisianians is that we, under all circumstances, will fight to say that Mardi, that Mardi Gras began in New Orleans, and it didn't. Okay. <laughs> Mardi Gras began in Mobile, in Mo Mobile, Alabama. It never. It that's where it all started in 1764. Really, that's and interesting. So, yeah, and so we 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 had the battle of the French descent. We had the battle because, as you know, you know Mardi Gras is on a on a Tuesday every year. Yes, and everybody drink and party and have a great time, and then it's Ash Wednesday on on Wednesday morning. And it happens every year. So you party, you drink, you eat, and you had a great time. And then I know as, as a little boy, I would end up at church being the altar boy the following morning. <laughs> you know, after having all these, the great time of, of alcohol and food and, and seeing my parents have such a great time with my aunts and uncles. And so it's, it's just amazing how you turn from having a huge party mm -hmm. to the spiritual being the following morning you know and i so, bet you have some stories oh yeah absolutely, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and so and so and so it's one of those things where it's just so effective of understanding what that culture is and all of this is 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 based out of france you know in, okay in in in, in france in the um 1800s you know they they used to have like a small gathering right before they went and got their ashes. And, and it was a small gathering. The, the United States decided that they wanted to have hundreds of thousands of people all on the street, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's just amazing what happens. And so the actual king cake is also celebrated. And, uh, what basically happens with that is, is that we used to embed the little baby, but because of uh, we've had children that have choked on. And so now in New Orleans, they've taken away the concept of having the baby in the actual king cake. So why did they do that in the first place? Have the baby in the cake? Um, be, because what 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 basically happened is, is that in the, in the French culture, they would have very small intimate parties at the houses. And whoever got the doll would uh, be the person that would have the next party oh, at a neighboring house. Okay. And, oh, so okay. It, and so it would go day to day, week to week until the Mardi Gras season was over with. And then everybody would kneel and get their ashes and, 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 and determine what this spiritual season is going to be before Easter. Mm, so, so interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. And and so it's been a great thing. And you know, I'm from New Orleans originally, Venus from Baton Rouge. And so we we have the same concept in terms of partying and having a great time. Mm -hmm. The Mardi Gras season is an excellent season. Uh, you know, it's an excellent time of the year. And as you know, uh, it's been canceled this year. Yes. 
And so with that in mind, there are going to be a lot of people, uh, you know, if you've seen some of the articles on NOLA.com, you'll see where they have a lot of houses that have been turned into floats at the front. Door I the saw house. that. That looks so amazing. Yes. They've turned those into floats. And, and one of the reasons is, is to just keep the momentum of having mm. fun. So, you know, with that in mind, it's, it's just an awesome thing, and 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 I I I've I've have been away from home for I would say over forty years. I am a Dillard graduate, and after I left Dillard, I I I've traveled all over the world working for the actual federal government. Um, I work for the I work for the Pentagon now. Oh, are you serious? And so, oh, yeah, that's and so, so I didn't cool. Put it, I didn't, I didn't put it in there. I used the Defense Health Agency because I didn't want I didn't want you know everybody to say, "Oh wow, he's a Pentagon employee." I wonder what's going on there, you know. Mm -hmm. So I usually don't discuss it, but for you, I can tell you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I so, just think it's amazing. Like that is super cool. Oh my yes, goodness. Yes, yes, yes. And so I work for the actual Pentagon, and so I'm here in the Fort Sam area. Mm -hmm. And I, it's a great thing, but um, I'm about to retire and I'm going to go into this cooking show thing permanently and do a little bit of part-time uh, healthcare consulting. Oh, uh, nice. So you have this serious day job uh, and you do all, you know, manage a team and do all this analysis. But so when does the chef hat that you have on, which I love, when does that come out and you do the cooking? Yeah, and so and so I I have a scheduled show on Wednesdays and su and Sundays, and I and and I'm also working on a cookbook. Oh, that's awesome! Wow. And so, yeah, and so I'm working on on a cookbook. My agent and the publishing company is in Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. and um, I'm also uh, with Vita. We're going to start doing some of the pop up um, markets where we're selling. I'm going to be selling stuffed shrimp and and. And and stuff crabs uh, at this at these food festivals here in in San Antonio. So I start that in March. That's exciting. Now, have so you I've, always loved to cook? I've always cooked. Um, just to give you some history in my cooking. I'm not sure if you know of a restaurant called Dookie Chase in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I've heard uh, of it. You heard of it? Okay. Mm -hmm. My my dad was the chef there. Oh wow! And and so my dad had nine brothers, and they all were chefs. All of them were chefs. Wow. All of them were chefs. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Amazing. And so, yeah, and 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 so I've I've been taught at an early age to learn how to uh, cook, and my dad would. Uh, one of the things I always tell people in the interviews is that when we used to come home, and you know how you come home and dinner's not ready, it's ready at five, but you get home at three fifteen, but your mom wants you to eat something until yes. dinner's ready. My dad used to make a toast bread, peanut and butter and jelly sandwich, and he would swirl chocolate on it with mush with marshmallows on top. Mm. So so we learned at an early age that that how you plate a food is very, very important. Uh, how you present food is very, very important. And the art and science of, of the uh, culinary is the significance of that plate because you know you you could serve chicken and waffles and it just looks so great mm -hmm. but but the minute you drizzle that syrup and, and you start to put the powdered sugar mm. that's when you get the culinary of it and some people love the powdered sugar and the syrup on their on their on their chicken so oh, put uh, it all on there yes just put it, that's right, <laughs> <laughs> that's, right. that's right yeah and so and so it's it has just been a uh a reality check of identifying uh you know what that culinary is and how i came to this existence i've been cooking for years with my family and friends and i was sick last june with COVID. Oh, I'm so sorry. And oh I had goodness. COVID so I had COVID so bad, doctor, that I was uh, every ten steps I would make, I would have to literally sit down and use the incentive barometer. Oh my goodness! And one of the things that I'm experiencing now is uh, post-COVID cognitive disorder. 
Really? Oh my goodness. Yes. And I also have loss of hearing and I also wow. have memory loss, but I've had all these different things after COVID. And let me tell you, I got up doctor one morning and I said, you know what? I've been cooking for the nation. I've lived all over the place and I've had parties and cooking for everyone. I said, why don't I share some of these experiences with people mm -hmm. on the masses? And I just decided, I said, you know what? You know all the drama and the craziness that we go through at work. Yes. And so, yes, the drama and the craziness. And so I just decided, I said, you know what? It's all about me now. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to start doing some things that I would like to do for me and to understand what that concept is internally to do things that I love to do, do things that's going to bring me some good mental health, uh, do things that allow me to internally meditate with me and understand that, hey, mm. this is my gift. And I tell people, it's important that we learn in life that we share our gift. Mm, so true. And your gift is your gift. I have nothing to do with your gift, but I could celebrate. And, and, and the cooking thing for me brings me such a level of peace and enjoyment. And so, and so the show focus is more on the show focus is more on, uh, um, how to, how to produce, uh, meals within 15 to 30 minutes. Oh, that's my kind of, yeah, show. That's my kind of meal. Yes, because because we're, we're, we're working every day and we have kids to take care of and spouses to take care of. And, 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 and it is more effective for us to create a meal that's going to be a benefit and value that's tasty, that's beautiful, that will allow us to do things within 30 minutes and not spend two or three hours on it. Absolutely. That is the uh, the the purpose and the fame of uh, Claude's Kitchen Cooking Show. We we allow people to uh, celebrate the culinary and art and science of food, the taste of food. And I always tell people at my shows, you know, from my heart to your heart, from my kitchen to your kitchen. Mm. And and know that God has tremendously blessed me with this opportunity to share that wealth of culinary with others. One of the things I'm going to do with my next cookbook, not the one that's coming up in March, my next cookbook, I'm going to focus more on uh, the South, South American foods. I've been in South America for eight years. Oh, wow. Okay. And so I'm going to do some of the South, South American dishes and, and also some of the French dishes. And so that's, that's where I'll be with my next cookbook. So that'll be my next project for probably uh, calendar year 22. Okay. So tell us, uh, so this cookbook that you do have, the first one that's coming out, what are you focusing on recipe wise in that cookbook? Yes. And so, and so in that, in that cookbook, I'm looking more on the Cajun and Creole aspect. Okay. Um, I will, I will have entrees in that cookbook. I'll have about maybe 17, 18 entrees uh, to include stuffed shrimp, stuffed crabs, uh, how do you do okra gumbo? How do you mm. do uh, Creole filet gumbo? Um, I'll have some pastries, uh, some of the appetizer pastries that you make, like, for example, the crab boils and things of that nature. Um, I also have uh, uh, drinks and desserts. Mm. Um, and then I'll have pull boy selections. Like one of the things that we love in New Orleans is to have the po' boy selections. Mm -hmm. And so I'll have uh, shrimp po' boys, I'll have roast beef po' boys, crab meat po' boys. And um, I will teach the individuals, you know, teach teach my audience or my community how to focus on making po' boy sandwiches. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so the book will have uh, a total of 50 recipes. The publisher is asking for 50, but I'm gonna do an additional two recipes and call it a bonus. Mm -hmm. for uh, the book sales. Um, I'll start having uh, book signings uh, probably sometime, a virtual book signing sometime probably in April. Oh, congratulations. That's exciting. Yes. I also have an American Lifestyle magazine that features me on a monthly basis. Oh, wow. That's great. And I also have someone uh, that, had asked, that has asked me to move into a commercial zone kitchen. In downtown oh, California. that's great. Uh -huh. And so I need to follow up with that, uh, with that concept 
uh, moving forward. But the actual cooking thing has been absolutely outstanding. So what are you cooking for us today with our theme of Mardi Gras at home? Yes. And so and so what I'm doing today is uh, showing you the Claude's Kitchen infant way of doing a king cake, a New Orleans style king cake. OK, now the normal ingredients in, in, in a king cake, which are flour, vanilla, milk and everything, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where you're like, hey, it takes a good 45 minutes to to complete. But what I'm doing today, uh, since, since my uh, since Claude's cooking, kitchen cooking show focuses more on 15 to 30 minute meals, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a rendition of what that looks like in terms of a king cake. Having the ability of coming home and say, hey, you know what? I want to make a nice treat for my hubby or the hubby could say, hey, I want to make a nice treat for my wife today. We want something that's uh, sweet and tasty that has mm -hmm. a representation of Mardi Gras. Or it could be a family member that say, hey, look, you know what? I have I have three kids and I want each of them to experience Mardi Gras in any part of the United States. And they could uh, look at what what that entails. And mm -hmm. so I'm, 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 I'm going to show you from an instant per perspective how I have accomplished making the king cake and having a great celebration as well. Okay, awesome. So, so, yes, absolutely. And so I'm going to move the camera down some so you can kind of see what I am doing here. I think you can see it here. Um, yes. You can see it? I can. Okay, good. Okay, good. And so right now I have uh, just the, the, the flaky, uh, the Pillsbury brand uh, flaky biscuits. And those are the cinnamon roll biscuits. When you're doing the king cake, you could have a king cake that has cinnamon rolls. It could have cream cheese. It could have apple. It could have lemon. It could have a variety of those ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and I purchased some long sticks here. And I got these. You can find these at any neighboring grocery store. Uh, I'm going to use these sticks because I'm going to make uh, a king cake on the stick. And so I'm going to take this stick. And then what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to spray the baking pan. And once I spray the baking pan, I'm going to uh, take this stick here and I'm going to allow myself to take three of these out of the container. And I'm going to roll these on the stick. And I want you to see how wonderful that looks. Once you roll these on a stick, you have the ability of, from an instant perspective, I'm going to take this the stick and I'm going to just put it in side of the cinnamon roll. And I'm going to pocket these or stack these accordingly. And I just wanted to show you, like I said, it's it's a it's a very quick way. Uh, it's the same ingredients that you use in a homemade king cake. All right. And so you're going to you're going to stack these so you could have those like this. OK, they're going to look just like this and you're going to lay them in the baking pan. OK, just like this. And when you lay them in the baking pan, you're going to bake those for approximately 15 to 20 minutes until they get very brown and they are a nice size. Now, the art and science of the uh, the king cake is the icing and the various flavors of the uh, the various flavors of the, of the actual king cake. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you just a minute here. I'm going to go ahead and use some of these whites to uh, just make sure for cleanliness purposes, I can wash my hand here. All right. And so now what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to make the icing. The icing is very, very important. I'm going to use just a, a, a teaspoon of the uh, a teaspoon of the vanilla. This is Mexico vanilla. Um, Mexico vanilla is absolutely amazing in terms of flavoring. I'm also going to uh, have a cream cheese flavored icing. And so I'm going to go ahead. I purchased an eight ounce package of the Pillsbury, I'm sorry, of the uh, cream cheese. And I'm going to 
include the cream cheese with the actual Mexi Mexican vanilla. Now I'm going to uh, get some powdered sugar. And what you want with the powdered sugar is approximately about a cup of the powdered sugar. I'm gonna use the cup of the powdered sugar. And I may include just a cup, just a, a cup and a half of the powdered sugar. All right. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just the hand mixer and I'm going to put the hand mixer on and then I'll go ahead and, and just mix the, here it is. We'll be able to see them. So this is the cream cheese icing that I'm making and you can make it. I, I love the cream cheese icing in uh, biscuits. You can use it however you'd like. It's such a wonderful flavor. Mm -hmm. It so looks good. Have, uh, and now I, so now I have the uh, cream cheese icing and that is uh, a cup and a half of uh, confectionery powdered sugar. Uh, one eight ounce package of cream cheese and uh, one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, so I'm going to clean up just a little bit so I could not have the sugar everywhere. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. And so now what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to show you how that looks, how the king cake looks. It's baked, uh, and so. I baked it for 20 minutes. And so now I have a, a rendition of what that would look like. So this is the king cake on, oh. on a stick mm -hmm. that you have. Here's it. Here it is on the stick. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to take the icing and I'm going to put it uh, on the cake. And what makes it the what makes it the king cake is the different colors that represents Mardi Gras and the different colors of how it it uh, brings the actual culinary to that. And again, this is an easy instant way of doing a king cake, guys. If you'd like to have a full representation of uh, making a king cake homemade, uh, there are also recipes out there for you to do that. And then, so what I'm gonna do now is that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some sprinkles on them. And I'm gonna put some yellow sprinkles. I'm also going to uh, use the uh, green sprinkles. And I'm also going to use the purple. All right. And so now you have a full recognizable king cake that mm -hmm. you can do for your family members. And it's a very instant way and quick way of doing the actual king cake. Again, if you wanted to do something that was uh, that you could do that was uh, homemade, uh, it, it 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 has the same representation. It's just made with flour dough, but this is absolutely amazing and absolutely gives the the representation of uh, the actual king cake. It looks good. Oh. I love that the sprinkles made me so happy when you put those on there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and you know the sprinkles the sprinkles add a little bit of the taste and touch as it relates to uh, the uh, king cake and, 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 and all of the ingredients. Uh, there are various ways that you could do the instant king cakes uh, to, to support the celebration of, of Mardi Gras. Uh, but that, that's what I've done uh, today. And as you see here, it matches the colors of my Mardi Gras uniform. Yes, which I absolutely love. Your yes, yes, your whole ensemble is fabulous. Like, yes. oh, like everybody should have one of those, Claude. I'm just saying. Well, thank you. Yes, everyone, everyone should have a a Mardi Gras 
costume, should mm -hmm. I say, to identify the the celebration of Mardi Gras. Uh, as you know, again, I'm I'm from New Orleans, and this is what we do on a yearly basis. It's important. It's important that we do that on a yearly basis. So I love it. But just wanted to show you guys again. This is the Claude's Kitchen Instant uh, King Cake that I that I I created, and it's just one of the great things that you can do for your family. Uh, you can do it for your friends. You can do it for your actual coworkers. Okay, all of your loved ones. Yes. It so yeah, no, that's, thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yes. We do a segment called "Who Said That," where I give you a quote and a clue, and if you can tell me who said that, I will donate a modest amount to the charity of your choice. So the this quote is. Anything made with love, bam, it's a beautiful meal. Anything made with love, bam, it's a beautiful meal. So you only get one guess, so if you need the clue, I'm happy to give it to you. Uh, let me see. And this is a chef, because I like to go along with the theme. This is a, yeah. Chef uh, that does Creole. Chef Emerald? Yes, that's oh my goodness, congratulations, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so he used to say that on his cooking show. Bam, <laughs> like I love that. <laughs> Bam, Chef Emerald. So, Chef Emerald is my hero. Oh, I didn't know that, that's when, awesome. Oh my god, when I tell you, I, I look at for on New Year's Eve. I usually look at his cookbooks just to get some idea of some festive rendition of how to create food in mm. all different Asian and Creole ways. Any final words before we wrap up? The time well, has flown I'm, by. Yeah, time has flown by. And so I have uh, uh, enjoyed uh, the show and, and I have enjoyed, uh, Candice, I have enjoyed you. Uh, thank you for such a wonderful blessing.